All right, now let's talk about length contraction. It's another really interesting thing that comes from special relativity. And this is the idea that the length of a fast moving object, so like if you're in your spaceship and you're traveling some considerable fraction of the speed of light, then you will appear to shrink. Now, what do I mean by this? You won't actually shrink. If you're sitting in your spaceship, it's not like you're like, oh my God, I'm getting squished. No, in your spaceship, everything will seem perfectly fine to you. However, if someone on Earth is watching you zoom by and they make some measurements of your length, you know, from far away, you really will appear to be shorter. You'll be contracted. So this is another really interesting thing from relativity. So this is what I mean by this one right here. We have to define something called proper length, which we will call L0. This right here is really important. You need to know this definition. Okay, you need to know this. And it's the proper length is the length uh, by someone for whom the object is at rest. So like if you're sitting in your spaceship and you're measuring the length of your spaceship, you're measuring the proper length. So we have an equation in your data booklet and it goes like this, L equals L zero over gamma. So that's in your data booklet, which is nice. Let's define our different variables. We've got gamma, which is the Lorentz factor. If you don't remember what that is, you can always look it up. I'm just going to write it down here because I think it's nice to remind ourselves. And it's 1 over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Whoops, c squared. There we go. All right, well, what's proper length? Well, that's this L0. And then, of course, L is just the length measured by a stationary frame. This here is the proper length measured by someone on the ship, so to speak, or someone who's you know moving. So you're flying in a spaceship and you're going 80% the speed of light as measured by someone on Earth. Okay, so someone on Earth watches you zoom by at 80% the speed of light or 0.8c. Now you measure the length of your ship to be 18 meters long. So in other words, you're actually just sitting there like on your ship, you can measure it at 18. Another way to say it would be if you're stopped, like when you land on Earth, how long is your ship? It's going to be 18 meters. However, as you zoom by, you're going to appear to be different length and it should be shrunk and it should be something less than 18. So let's see what we calculate here. So first of all, we need to know what are our variables here? What are we looking at? So we have L0, the proper length. And what is that? Well, are we trying to find it or do we know it? Well, we already know it. We know the proper length is actually 18 meters because that's the length that you measure your ship. Therefore, we must be looking for just L. That's actually what we want. That's what we want. And we know that V, for example, is 0.80C. So let's go ahead and use this calculation. So we're going to write down the equation we use. So L equals L0 over gamma. That always helps to do. Um, off to the side, I usually like to go ahead and calculate gamma. That really helps. So I'm going to say, all right, gamma equals uh, 1 over square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. Okay, what's that going to be? That's going to be equal to 1 over 1 minus, and let's see, it's 0.8 C all that squared, all that over c squared, and all that square rooted. If I keep going then, let's see, I've got 1 over 1 minus, and what's 0.8 squared? Well, 8 times 8 is 64, so it's 0 0.64 uh, c squared over c squared square rooted. Good news, the c squareds cancel out, they're supposed to. And what's 1 minus 0 0.64? That's equal to uh, 1 over, oops, I should probably keep it in the same color. Um, it's going to be 1 over, let's see, 1, uh, well, one minus 0.64 is 0 0.36, like this. And square root of 0.36 is going to be, what's that, 0 0.6. So I'm going to have gamma equals 1 over 0 0.6. Um, yeah, I'll just do that on my calculator. I'm feeling a little bit lazy now. So what's 1 over 0 0.6? That gets my gamma value of this right here, so 1.67, let's just say. Okay, so I have my gamma now, which is really good, because now I can go ahead and calculate L. Because I've got L equals then my proper length, which is 18 meters, divide that by this 1.67 dot dot dot, because that's my gamma, right? That's what I put in here. And what do I end up with? I end up with L equals, let's see, what's 18 over that answer? So I'm of course getting my calculator again, and I'm just gonna say, hey, what's 18 over, and I'm going to say give me the answer. I end up with 10.8. Now I'm allowed two significant figures, so I should say it's going to be uh, 11 meters. 
And there we go. Your ship will appear to have shrunken, so to speak. It'll appear to have actually gotten shorter, right? It went from 18 meters, which it really is, and they will see it. They will see it appear as only 11 meters. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that mind-blowing? <laughs> Okay, one more example. Since we're talking about relativity, look, Einstein married his cousin Elsa. Even his marriage was relative. <laughs> Ouch. All right, here we go. So we've got a pole. This is an interesting one. It's kind of a common idea. The basic idea is you have a pole. Let's say it's two meters long, and it's flying at a relativistic speed v. So we don't know exactly what v is, but we just know that someone on Earth is just watching it zoom by. Okay, And we know this is the weird part is it can momentarily fit in a barn of length 1.6. Even though at rest it's two meters long, for a split second it can actually fit within, a, you know, within the two doors of some barn. Now, this isn't realistic because what barn is only 1.6 meters long? I don't know. And also you'd have to have magic doors that are opening and closing at the same time, but the idea still holds true. And this is real physics here, so this could theoretically happen at least. Um, so if you're flying in, so like I said, again, your ship, so to speak, this pole is two meters long, and it's going to momentarily appear to fit into 1.6 meters. The question is, how fast is it going? Sounds weird, but let's just write down our variables. Let's see what we know. So do we know L0, the proper time? Well, the proper time would be the one for whom the object is at rest. So that would be um, two meters. Okay, so that would be two meters long. L, then, is going to appear to be 1.6 meters. And the question is V equals, ooh, we don't know that. So let's use the equation again, and let's just uh, have at it. So we've got L equals L0 over gamma. Okay. Well, let's just figure this out. So if we're looking for uh, gamma, oh, gamma's got the speed in it, doesn't it? So let's maybe solve for gamma instead. So we'll just get gamma by itself. So we'll get gamma is going to be L0 over L. That's going to help us because we can put in L0, which is 2. We can put in L, which is 1.6, and we can divide those two numbers. So let's do that on my calculator. So I've got 2 over 1.6. Let's see what I get. So I get 1.25. So that means now I know that gamma equals 1.25. That's really helpful now. Because now I can start to go ahead and find out what to do with gamma. Now I can write down the equation for gamma, of course. So gamma equals, remember, it goes 1 over 1 minus v squared over c squared, all that in a square root. Okay, so that means then I have 1.25 equals 1 over 1 minus v squared over c squared square rooted. Okay, so what should I do with this? Well, I don't like this square root on the bottom. I think it looks ugly, so I'm going to move it to the top. So I'm going to say, actually, that uh, I'm going to just switch them around. So I'm going to say 1 minus v squared over c squared square rooted. So this is going to multiply and come up, and this one's going to come down. So it's going to be 1 over 1.25. That might be a nice way to start. At least it's not so ugly. All right, if I want to get rid of the uh, square root, then I have to square both sides. So that means now I'm going to have 1 minus v squared over c squared is going to equal, well, whatever 1 over 1.25 is squared. So let me do that. So I'll do uh, 1, so 1 over the answer, which is going to be this, and I'm going to square that. So I get 0.64. All right, that's kind of nice, because now I can work with this here. Okay, so what can I do now? Well, I can move my minus v squared over c squared to the other side by doing a plus, and this one here can go to the other side. I'm going to swap them. In other words, it's going to go 1 minus 0 0.64. That's going to equal v squared over c squared. Well, 1 minus 0 0.64, that's, what's that? That's uh, 0 0.36. So that's going to equal v squared over c squared. I'm almost there. Um, in order to get v by itself, I want to take the square root of both sides. So what's the square root of 0.36? Well, the square root of 36 is 6, so that means I'm going to get uh, 0 0.6, then it's going to equal v over c. Therefore, finally then, I get v equals, and I'll just put my c up top, 0.6c. That's my exact answer. Phew, so that means that if you are flying at 60% the speed of light, so if this pole, for example, is flying at 60% the speed of light, then that two-meter pole, as measured you know, by the pole or at rest, that two-meter pole will appear to be only 1.6 meters long, only 
to someone who's not moving, right? Someone who's watching it fly by. It'll appear shrunken or contracted.